Welcome to Coffee Time. This will be a weekly show guided by your input and miscellaneous things that occur to me throughout the week. I don't know what day it will be. It will probably settle on Tuesday or Wednesday, but I won't be able to figure that out until I get back from Columbia. I've addressed it before, but I, I keep getting questions on it, so here we go. This hat. This hat. I bought this hat in Vilcabamba because the sun was fierce that day, and the sun here can actually be dangerous. It doesn't cover up a bald spot. I will say it's an extremely comfortable, flexible, soft, lightweight hat. However, I don't really wear hats. It's extremely rare. So rather than throw it away, I wear it for the videos because what the heck, right? I want to give you an update on the Venezuelan girls, but before I do that, no eyewear broke it yesterday so I've got to figure out what I'm gonna do maybe I can get that done today okay for the Venezuelan girls six of them they've all received hats and boots and sweaters and other clothes contributions from a number of very nice very good hearted people including Cuenca consignments right here in Cuenca they are all, as of today, every one of them have a job. That's um, pretty amazing in an economy that has no work. Now, I'm not going to say these are all good jobs, and I'm not going to say that they're all being paid what they should be paid, but they're all earning something. So where they are today is a far cry from where they were two months ago. Three didn't have cell phones. Those three now have new cell phones. One of them desperately needed a laptop for English lessons via Skype. She now has a laptop. They all received money for their bus cards for transportation. There is an endless need. And so if you live here, I implore you to reach out and give a hand wherever you can. But to those that have helped, I thank you so much. You have made a huge difference. It is an ongoing thing. And so there's a few people that wanted to uh, contribute to their well-being going forward. And, and so that's being taken care of. And in one case, um, the person who needed it most hadn't eaten in three days because she had worked at her job for over a month and still hadn't been paid yet. So I guess there's a difference between having a job and actually receiving money for it. Well, it wasn't a huge amount, but that amount fed somebody who hadn't been eating. So, uh, once again, I thank you for all that you've done. The experience I've had is both positive and negative. I had a lot of people offer up things that would disappear. <clears throat> so I learned quickly don't make any arrangements, don't make any plans on what people tell you. Wait until something actually shows up. Otherwise, it can be very disappointing, in some cases even heartbreaking. So that was my mistake to say something about it. I Going forward, I will know never to do that again. I don't have any animosity to the people that backed out because why would I? Maybe they thought it was a great idea and they realized that they just didn't want to bother. Maybe their life was busy. Maybe they found out they just couldn't really afford to do what they'd offered to do. Um, you know, I'm not here to make anybody feel guilty for what their life situation is. I appreciate that they even considered it. Okay, so as you know, if you watch these videos, I'm headed back to Columbia. I've been there, I think, four times in the last year. And I did live there some time ago, a number of years ago. I absolutely love the place, and um, I will be going back. I'm going back for a couple reasons that are very practical. Um, bringing a cell phone to somebody that lives there, and there's some things I have to check out. And do some video work. And then after I do that, which will only take a few days, 
I'll just kick back and enjoy Armenia for probably a week and then I'll be coming back. Now during that time uh, there there may be a pause there usually is in, in what I'm able to post up. It depends on where I am and how the internet is at, at any given place. I've done some B&B that had internet but it was so terrible that it, there wasn't enough to actually upload. Now don't misunderstand the internet in Colombia is stupendous but if you're in somebody's B&B they might advertise they have Wi-Fi but that doesn't mean that they're going to put in you know a, a high-end Wi-Fi. I can't tell you how much I've been asked about Adriana and Sandy. What happened? They were featured a lot and then all of a sudden they just disappeared. Well for uh, they were never to be living in my house permanently. I explained that a long time ago. It was a temporary thing and it was to be reevaluated around Christmas time. And come April, was February or March, um, they moved out to a place not too far from here. Um, we're in contact almost constantly. Um, we're all part of that foundation, so we have that we need to communicate on. Sandy's daughter's preschool is one block from here. And so she very often will stop in the morning or in the afternoon to say hi, what's going on, just chat for a little while. Uh, Adriana is m much busier and doesn't have a whole lot of free time. And she's been very sick lately with the flu, so sorry to hear that. On the other hand, I had to chuckle because she was always lecturing about taking ginger and vitamin C and that's why she's never sick and then she's had a hellacious case of the flu uh, for the last couple weeks and actually uh, something she never does she missed a couple days of work it was that serious so I wish the best for her but uh, you know remember when you're preaching to people about things like that yeah you know it could get sick. I told her that at the time and she said oh no no I never get sick well yeah you do the flu is a virus and all the vitamin C in the world isn't going to cure it. As a matter of fact, it's known, not so much here in Ecuador, but it is known that if you take too much vitamin C, first of all, you just pee most of it away, but second of all, it can actually be bad for you. Uh, 20 years ago in the United States, it was all the rage and people were pounding vitamin C and it never makes a difference of whether you're going to get the flu or not. If you eat a balanced diet, you have everything that you keep nutrition-wise to fight off viruses. But you're not going to fight these off if they get a hold on you. And the reason I was sick quite a few times when they were here was because of the little four-year-old monster, Isa, who was constantly sick from the, from the preschool because we all know what German-fested cesspools those things are and so she would come infected with the zombie virus and she would sneeze and wipe it on me and it, it, you know sure enough three days later I, I'm sick recently I've had quite a few gringo meetings people that are down here some that have been here before one a couple have been here many times before some it's their first time on a visit or they just moved here and whatever I can, I'm happy to meet with them, answer any questions, you know, just kind of shoot the bull. It usually uh, ends up to be two or three hours, and I've met some very nice people, and there was a flurry recently. Uh, obviously, because I'm leaving for a week or two, I, I won't be doing that again for a while. I don't videotape those, I don't record them, uh, because I don't want to intrude on other people. And sometimes people will say yes, but they really don't mean it. And then when they see the video, they you know they want me to go back and edit it. Once I do a video, edit it, process it, and post it up, it can't really be changed. All I can do is delete it and start over. And so, uh, you know, to avoid issues for everybody, I just don't really get into that. So now, as for the video processing, it's been going very well. Uh, this new setup I have, it's new. Therefore, it's not overheating and everything is working. And 
while I still have some high level software that would really up my game that I am not able to use yet. At some point I can really upgrade the power of my hardware. But I'm actually able to do more than I've been able to do in, in a couple years. And processing the videos, it takes so long. And what you do is you, you take all your clips, you put them into the program, and you cut and splice and add any captions and any transition effects. You go through that editing process. Once you have it edited to the way that you want it, then you have to process that video, produce that video, so that you can upload it as a little short film and it goes into a certain format and speed and frames per second however you set that up and that takes a lot of processing power a seven minute video will usually take about 30 minutes for that stage alone with my old setup that had been overheating for the last couple years because of the demand on it it was going to a blue screen it was rebooting or if it processed it would take a couple hours to process it, it was really cumbersome it was painful it didn't do that in the beginning it's just that these videos really take a toll it takes a toll on your camera equipment it takes a toll on everything that you use uh, it's not you buy it and you got it it, these things have to be updated and replaced pretty often. I didn't know that going in. Now another topic that I'm asked a lot about is every time there's a girl on the video, uh, people think it's some kind of girlfriend. And I can tell you that there's not a single person that's ever been in my videos that was ever anything like a girlfriend. They're just friends. You know how there's some girls that really only have guy friends? Well, I'm a guy that really only has girl friends, friends that are female. It's been like that most of my life. I have guy friends, but they're few and far between. And I'm very comfortable around females, and they're comfortable around me. And it, it's just the way my life has always been and it's no different here it doesn't make any difference you are who you are regardless of where you are I will say that because it's been so long a total of four years of dealing with illness and then coming here and it's been three years we're going on seven years that I've been alone and to think that going back in most of my life I couldn't go three days without going crazy without having having somebody in my life uh, I needed a lot of time to adjust to the way things were post illness and I got that and I, I'm very uh, happy that I took that time but I've actually been thinking lately that I'm going to now be open to meeting somebody I had slam that door and even if it was there in front of me it was something that was essentially ignored and I've been going back and forth on this uh, since last fall and uh, it, for a short time I think that's what I want to do and then maybe no that's not what I want to do am I ready for that um, you know emotionally because of uh, being alone for so long but I've decided that I'm going to kind of open myself up for that. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. It could be 10 years. It could be never before I meet somebody. Because I have to tell you that I couldn't put up with me. And it would have to be some kind of angel saint that could actually tolerate me. But there's probably somebody out there. And so I'm going to keep my eyes open for that. And not discourage it next time it comes along. Now, do you really care about that? I don't know. But there's so many questions to me about that situation, and I never really answer them, and about these girls that are in my videos, and uh, you know, I just felt I should address that. And what I'm going through has nothing to do with being in Ecuador, or in Colombia, or anywhere else. What I'm going through has to do with what I went through that began in the United States. 
And so I also wanted to clarify that that process isn't something you would expect to experience just because you came to Ecuador or Colombia or anywhere else. Uh, it's just personal. It's just something with me. And that's just the way that is. So I can leave it at that. It's driving me crazy without these glasses. It was pointed out in my last video that there's a clip at minute, let's see, four minutes and 56 seconds in. This is the one on running errands. That at that point in the sky, there's a skull. And I can't believe it. It's so obvious. I, I didn't catch it during editing. Um, it's interesting. You might want to take a look at it. I don't know. And the last thing I'm going to say, another frequent questions, comment that I get is about, yeah, I know, I hate finger quotes, competition videos. There's hardly anybody doing anything with Ecuador, but there's a, there's a couple. And then there's the guy, uh, Ask Andy, that goes all over the place, but he's done quite a few in Ecuador. And does it bother me? One was brought up that there was uh, somebody that every time I would post a video a couple days later, they'd be posting a video on the, on the exact same topic. So they were copying me. And it doesn't bother me. There is no competition. Um, I, I try to watch those videos once in a while, just like, you know, you probably do, just out of curiosity. But I don't sit there and go, oh, I want to kill him or what, whatever. The only thing I ask other people is, please just be honest. The only thing I will say, and it's not just Ecuador, but it's just travel videos in general, is very often there's an ulterior motive. Very often they're selling something. They're selling a seminar. They're selling an ebook. They're selling, selling, selling. And unfortunately, that will very often skew the information. I mean, you can't sell something if you're not promoting things in a certain way, I believe. So um, I guess that's the only thing that bothers me is that because people will watch that and believe that information and, and maybe be led astray. But aside from that, in any other way, in any other manner, there, there is no competition. What's, if somebody else is successful, it has no positive or negative effect on me at all. As a matter of fact, um, what people do where there's more people doing videos, they collaborate and together they exponentially grow their channel. There's nobody here that I can collaborate with, otherwise I would. I, I would do that because then you actually share audiences and you can double or triple overnight. Uh, once you receive a certain level, then your videos are opened up to a much broader market. Mine are actually limited. They're capped. They're not very accessible for anyone. Uh, if they do a search, unless you're subscribed, it's not going to be as prominent as a number of others are, for example, unless you get lucky on a particular video. Um, the truth of it is, I, I've been looking at those algorithms and, and it looks like you have to have at least 5,000 subscribers before you get to that. But another thing that plays into that algorithm, it's not just one thing, it's those likes. And I didn't understand this until recently. I know they tell you that you should ask people to like your videos, but what I didn't realize is that once you get up around 100 likes on the video, that it jumps into another category and it's much more apt to be seen worldwide. I didn't know that. And my average is about 30, which I always thought was pretty good for the views, but apparently it's 100. So you might try to see me push for more likes in the future. I don't know. I hate that kind of stuff. And that's why on my videos, you don't see me constantly doing this and this and, you know, please. And, you know, I just hate that end of it. The video is hard enough. So is there competition? There's no competition. 
And the only thing I will say on the the truth or the falseness of a video is in most cases that doesn't even apply. Just like I have said endless times that my videos are my opinion, my experience, tempered with me asking a lot of questions with people that are directly involved. So if it's something that goes on in Cuenca, I ask my local friends. If it's something going on in Venezuela, I ask people, the Venezuelan friends. If it's in Colombia, I ask, I have a lot of friends in Colombia and a few here. And so, you know, I will ask to, to see what my opinion is and then weigh it against what theirs is. Almost always, it's a similar place. I've got a pretty good grasp on these things. I mean, I've traveled a lot in my life and I pay attention. I research, I study, but does that mean everything I put out is going to be, quotes again, true? It's my truth. It's what I know. It's what I see. It's what my friends share with me. That's my truth. That does not mean that someone else could have an opposite view and that is necessarily false. It may be false to me, but it's not false to their life, their experience, their friends. People in this world don't run in lockstep. And you see right now in the United States this huge divide where it seems like one half of the country has lost their mind and the other half feels that they're perfectly sane. And if you go to the other half, it's, it reverses. Well, they have their own truths, right? It's no different with topics like we're talking in these videos. You know, if I say, well, you should do this, you shouldn't do that, like, don't bring your containers down here because of X, Y, Z, somebody else can have a completely different viewpoint of that. It doesn't mean it's invalid. And if you're differing from what my viewpoint is, it doesn't mean I'm a liar. I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. I'm telling my truth. I'm giving you the very best information I can. It doesn't mean there's not necessarily another way that could be possible. So I guess that's all I have to say on these other videos. Uh, no, they don't bother me. I have no problem with them. Now and then it does twerk me a little bit because there is such a thing as an outright lie and occasionally I'll see that and it just kind of bugs me because I know the motive behind it. But in most cases, even when people are selling things, uh, those videos will come through and be pretty, pretty accurate, uh, pretty good representation. So, uh, no, nope, they're not my enemy, not my friends. They exist. I appreciate that they're out there, even when they show other viewpoints, especially when they show other viewpoints, because you need to get all the good information you can. So if all goes well, I'll put another one up next week, but certainly when I get back from Columbia, this will become a weekly little chit-chat with you. Please keep sending your emails, your questions, your comments, anything that you want me to address, and this will be the place that we will do that. At some point, might even go live. We'll see you later.